So Jack, thank you so much for coming today. Thank you. Yeah, so what made you run for office? Uh, what made me run for office? You know, that's a very good question. Um, I feel that over the years, both the Liberal and the Conservative candidates have not really advocated on behalf of the best interests of our community. Uh, they've been very silent on major issues. So one of the things that I fought for was for the restriction of house size on the agricultural land reserve from those great big mega mansions. And we know, the community knows, that um, there were some issues that were happening there. Uh, and that caused me to sort of investigate a little bit because initially I thought, what is the incentive? Like, why is this happening? And I found that the foreign buyer's tax uh, does not apply to farmland. It applies to residential areas, but it does not apply there. So there was the incentive to build these uh, mega mansions on farmland. And they were unrestricted in, si in terms of size. Uh, they could build 12,000 square feet, 15,000 square feet. Um, and then a little more investigation, uh, we found out that uh, in order to qualify for farm tax, they needed to grow, produce, sell $2,500 per year in order to qualify for the farm tax. So many people in the community were quite outraged because it was a matter of fairness and, and equity. Uh, it, it's not right that we are paying just as much, if not sometimes higher, residential property taxes than someone that's living in a 12,000 square foot villa um, and qualifying for farm tax. So that was a big issue. And again, the Conservatives and the Liberals had nothing really to say about that. Uh, it also ties in with what we have known throughout uh, the recent past about money laundering in our region. And I also initiated a petition calling on the provincial government to initiate a public inquiry into the money laundering, the drug trafficking, and also the profiteering in our real estate. Uh, these are issues that are sort of interconnected. Um, and that was one of the reasons that I stepped forward to speak out for our community, and I'll continue to do so. As you know, we've been talking to each other. This is the first time we're meeting yes. in person, but <laughs> we've been talking to each other, and I, I'm aware that you have, you, you're very passionate about a few other topics as well. For example, the acute care center. So what's that about? Yes, um, well, you know, the BC Liberals, this was a provincial issue at the time, uh, they had committed to rebuilding the acute care tower. There had been reports uh, in the media and so forth that the acute care tower was not seismically safe and that in a catastrophic earthquake, that tower would have come down. This was very concerning because in that kind of catastrophic situation, where do we go to? For, for emergency services to the hospital. Well, guess what? It's no longer there. Uh, so there was a lot of um, dragging of their feet on this. Uh, then we received a new government, uh, a provincial government under the leadership of John Horgan. And uh, again, there were still things that were sort of dragging in terms of a commitment. And I was very concerned. I was concerned for, for several reasons. One, the seismic upgrading needed to happen, uh, but also the hospital was built 50 years ago for a population of 50,000 people. Well, Richmond has grown as a community. We're over 200,000 people. And the hospital foundation had done an outstanding job of raising donations uh, to help uh, pay for, you know, uh, the mitigating cir uh, circumstances. And again, there was no real firm commitment. And I was concerned, as were many other people in the community, that the hospital foundation would lose that money if there was not a firm commitment to shovels in the ground by a certain date. Uh, so I really pushed, and I wasn't the only one who pushed uh, the provincial government to follow through on that commitment, a and they did. And about uh, a month ago, uh, they announced recently that um, they were going to um, take care of many of those issues, and it, it far exceeded our expectations. Uh, I think initially it was around uh, 300 million odd dollars, and the recent announcement was f just over 800 million dollars. So we're, we're getting that uh, replacement. To come back to the topic of money laundering, that's yes, that's a federal issue, right? 
Well, it, it seems to be a, a provincial because there are certain things that we can do here in the province. And there's also, you know, federal things that we can be doing as well. And again, both the Conservatives and the Liberals have been very quiet on this. And I, I remember not only myself, but other people in our community as well, being absolutely outraged when, you know, news reports were coming out from uh, Sam Cooper. Uh, who was reporting uh, in the media that uh, people were showing up at the River Rock Casino with hockey duffel bags. That's <laughs> a hockey duffel bag is quite large, filled with $20 bills. A and no one saw anything and no one said anything. Um, also reported in the media, because it's all interconnected, was the fentanyl crisis that was happening at that time and continues to happen. And I was quite outraged. I thought, this, this is not right. This is not right. Three people a day were dying from the fentanyl over, uh, overdoses. And uh, that needed to be investigated. That needed to be dealt with. And again, the profiteering in real estate and the flipping, which uh, sort of ties into some news that we had recently, actually today, uh, that uh, a Liberal candidate in Vancouver, Granville, is actually breaking Trudeau's own home flipping uh, rules. Uh, so the candidate in uh, Vancouver, Granville, has flipped homes uh, recently and earned about $600,000 in a short period of time. And, uh, you know, Trudeau made a promise to bring in a speculation tax in 2020 in their budget, and they have not followed through. Uh, since the time that Trudeau has been in power, since 2015, the average price of, of homes in the Metro Vancouver area has ri risen over $400,000. And since that 2020 budget, since they did not do anything or no implementation, uh, homes have risen uh, about $140,000 since 2020. So, you know, we need to get to the bottom of it. And I did, as I mentioned earlier, uh, petition the provincial government. And I got a lot of resistance on it. Initially, I had comments of, it'll take a long time. It'll cost a lot of money. And I kept on referring back to uh, a commission that happened in Quebec called the Charbonneau Commission. And they were investigating corruption and uh, similar issues, money laundering and, and so forth. And it took four years. It, it didn't happen overnight. And it cost quite a bit of money. But they were able to recover more money than they spent on the commission. And that's what we needed to do here too. Um, for years, this is, this is no surprise, many of us have been complaining about affordability. Have we not? We have. It's not a new phenomenon. So my uh, inclination was we must get to the bottom of it. We must get to the root cause because for so long, all that uh, the current politicians have been doing was sort of sweeping it under the carpet. Um, it's too big of a problem. The, it, you know, it goes too deep. It requires systemic change. In other words, maintain the status quo. And, and that's unacceptable. It's unacceptable for many families, my own family included. Uh, my daughter got married uh, two years ago. To Congratulations. A, <laughs> thank you. To um, a lovely uh, young man from New Zealand. I don't understand half of what he says to me, but <laughs> he's lovely. And they had the opportunity, I, I will tell you, they had the opportunity to stay here in Canada and make a home. Or they could have gone to New Zealand and started their life together there. Well, sadly, they chose to go to New Zealand. Why? Because they could afford to buy a home. They bought a, you know, a modest home with a front yard and a backyard, a family home to raise a family for $350,000. What do you buy in Vancouver for $350,000? Not much, if anything. So um, we needed to get to that. And I know that you know, the argument was um, that uh, you know, we could do some things more immediately, and that's fine. We can do uh, some things here provincially uh, to get the ball going and to create legislation to handle some of these concerns. But ultimately, we must get to the bottom of that. And, and that just was not happening.